There are lots of ways you can make plaster casts of things. These have been made in a latex mould, but you can get plastic moulds and all sorts of things and cast plaster of Paris in them. The trouble is, although it comes out as a good uh, little effigy, it looks like plaster of, plaster of Paris. It doesn't look terribly exciting. It certainly doesn't look like stone. And yet plaster of Paris is made from gypsum, and so is alabaster. It's a beautiful stone. It was used uh, in antiquity, and it's still used today for ornamental stoneware. And it takes a very high polish, and it has veins in it. How can you make your plaster of Paris look more like alabaster? Well, here's a simple way. First of all, you take your little effigy, whatever it is, in plaster, tie a piece of cotton around it, and then you dangle it into hot wax. And here's a warning. When you melt wax, always do it like this, in a double boiler. A saucepan full of water and your tin of wax in the middle. Never put the wax directly onto a flame or onto a hot plate. If you do, it'll catch fire. You'll have a very bad accident indeed. But that way, it's quite safe. And you melt into that the white stubs of old candles. Once that's all melted, in goes the plaster ornament, and you leave it in there, if you can, until the bubbles stop rising. That means the wax is soaking into the little ornament. Well, I won't leave it as long as that, because uh, really only a few minutes will do it, but basically the longer the better. Take it out there, and while it's still hot, transfer it to some tissues, cut off the thread, and mop off as much of that molten wax as you can. Then leave it there to cool. And it'll take a while, so I've brought one in here. Once it is cool, it has to be cold, otherwise the wax will be uh, too runny. Once it's cold, the wax sets, and by polishing it with a cloth, you wear down the surface, hit the wax, which starts to take a high shine. And because the wax soaking into the plaster makes it a bit translucent, you end up with something that looks a great deal more like stone than your original plaster of Paris. And there we are. But alabaster has veins in it. You can see down here in these little bookends. And the veins look very much more lifelike than the dead white of the plaster. So here's how we get the veins. When you mix the plaster, put in a bit of powder paint. And by stirring it, you'll get that sort of effect. Here it is, all streaks and uh, lines. And you don't have to overdo that, because you notice if I dip that into the, uh, the wax, it actually comes out looking rather darker than the way it went in, just like that. So if you've prepared your figurine like that, and I've got one here, it's really got to be fairly muted to get the alabaster effect. Well, let's put that in and see what happens. Dunk him in there and let the wax soak in. The bubbles are rising nicely. Well, there we are. You'll notice how much that color has changed. Same thing, put it down on there, take off its string, mop it with the tissues, and leave it to cool while the wax hardens. Well, that will take a little while, so I'll show you a couple where I've already done it. That, first of all, is the straight plaster, and it gives you the effect of white stone. This one had a lot of black powder paint and some brown, and with a high polish, it looks rather like fake slate. Certainly much better than the plaster. And here's the one we've taken out. It's cold now, so we can polish it. You notice it's rather dull like that, but if I get my soft cloth and start rubbing it, you'll notice a shine comes up. There we go, appearing now. And if we do that all the way around, that streakiness will make it look reasonably like alabaster. I want to know